Hello and welcome to a TubeLine tutorial video. In this video, we'll be going over the best operating practices for the TLR 5000 bale wrapper to ensure proper wrapping for maximizing both efficiency and profits. The TLR 5000 automatic bale wrapper focuses on round bales and its operator's needs. This round bale only wrapper has been refined to increase speed and precision while still maintaining its moverability and durability. Wrapping your bales comes with a number of benefits. Wrapping your bales creates an airtight seal that's an ideal environment for ensiling, providing more nutritious hay with less loss, while still providing protection against harsh weather elements and UV rays. In addition, wrapping your bales offers a cost-effective solution to maximizing yields without the cost of a solid structure. Before beginning to wrap your bales, it's crucial that you choose an appropriate place to begin your tube. Ideally, you want to set up on a firm, level surface away from any obstructions and that's accessible during winter conditions. Depending on your quantity, a good rule of thumb is that you have enough space for at least 50 bales in a row. It's also important to remember to leave yourself enough space to maneuver should you need to begin a new row. Begin your wrapping process by doing a visual check of your area, looking for any glass or debris that may cause slits or tears in the plastic film. Be sure to also look for anything that may attract the attention of rodents, such as food and garbage. Once you believe your wrapping site is suitable, begin to tow your wrapper to the starting line position and apply the manual brakes located at the rear wheels by pulling the silver lever down and locking the wheels into position. Next to the left rear wheel lock is a transport lock. Remove the locking pin and pull this out and re-secure the pin. Upon using the wrapper, it's extremely important that you do an internal and external inspection. First, we'll check the wrapper's engine oil by positioning yourself directly in front of the main control panel and removing the shield directly below the panel by flipping the silver pin up and turning it to the left while lifting up on the panel. Pull the silver handle of the dipstick and remove the stick from its slot. Ideally, the oil level should be in the middle of the two holes. After your oil level has been checked, position the dipstick back and secure the shield. Walk around to the front right side of the wrapper and check the gas tank tucked underneath the saddle of the wrapper to ensure that you have a sufficient amount of gasoline. Directly to the left of the gas tank is the oil fill cap. Ensure that the oil levels are appropriate by checking the oil level meter underneath the cap. Should the wrapper need oil, simply twist the cap and reference your owner's manual to ensure the proper amount of oil. Next, begin to do a visual check of your wrapper to ensure all the components are tightened and free of any obstructions. After the visual inspection has been completed, begin folding the tongue by removing the pin in the center and folding it inwards and securing it with the same pin in the silver bracket. Next, position yourself to the left of the wrapper in front of the door guard. Firmly slide the fence guard to the left, exposing the hoop and wrap carriers. It's also important at this time to set the hoop lock so that no movement should arise during setup. Remove the top spool holder of the roller. Place one of the film rolls into the provided carrier and secure with a spool holder. Once the film has been secured to the film roller, take the end of the film and slide it down underneath the slave roller and over top the slow tensioner roller parallel to it and behind the fast tensioner roller below it. Repeat this process on the other wrap carriers. Next, begin turning on the wrapper by turning the green knob on and pulling out the emergency stop button on the control panel. Below on the wrapper's engine, begin to enable this by turning the key and pulling the choke out to the desirable position and starting the engine. Directing your attention back to the main control panel, it's now time to adjust the settings to your desired preference. The TLR 5000 AX2 control panel is made up of several switches and buttons within a simple layout to provide proficient wrapping regardless of technical understanding. Starting from the top left corner working our way clockwise, we have the on-off switch, the emergency stop button, 
manual and automatic switch, forwards and backwards switch, hoop rotating switch, left or right steering, caution lights, night light switch, and lastly, the film sensor switch. Once the wrapper is fully turned on, begin to test the maneuverability by adjusting the tilt up and down, and its movements back and forth, as well as left and right steering using the hydraulic levers left of the control panel. Next, begin to test the ram back and forth. For some operators, using the optional remote may be desirable when testing out these features. It's also important to remember that the wrapper must be on auto mode to use the remote. Once the wrapper has been visually inspected and tested, it's time to begin wrapping. When starting a new line, it's absolutely crucial to begin using an end cap. An end cap can be achieved by using an individual pre-wrap bale, also known as a plug, or created by taking a bale and slipping a large plastic sleeve over the one side and tailoring the corners using industrial strength tape. Once the end cap is created, load the end cap onto the saddle of the wrapper with the plastic face facing the hoop. Next, switching the wrapper back into manual mode, begin using the push ram to move the bale towards the hoop until the front of the end cap is in line with the wrapper's film holder. Once the bale is flush with the film holders, position yourself in front of the door guard and taking one end of the film and firmly tying it to the end of the end cap or the holes on the bale guides and repeat this process on the other film holder. Once both film ends have been fastened to the end cap or frame, begin to load another bale onto the saddle and manually begin to push the bale forward, continuing the wrapping process. It's recommended to wrap two or three bales in manual mode before switching the wrapper into automatic mode. As the wrapper runs through its wrapping process, direct your attention to the limit switches located at the side rail left of your control panel. The limit switches should be positioned so when the ram drives backwards, the bale should just touch the previous bale before resetting back into its initial position. Begin to load the bales one at a time until reaching your fourth bale. Next, begin to manually tilt the wrapper using the hydraulics, placing the tail on the ground. Be sure to remove the wheel brakes at this time. At this point, you can begin to switch your wrapper to your preferred method. Continue to load bales onto the saddle until you reach your final bale. Upon your final bale, create another end cap for the end of the line. If possible, pick up your end cap and load it over the side. This allows the plastic to seal the puncture when wrapped. Once the final end cap has been loaded onto the saddle, allow for the ram to push the end cap towards the hoop. Be sure to tape up any holes or tears that may be caused by equipment to ensure an airtight seal. Using manual mode, push the bale as far as possible while rotating the hoop. Once the ram has been set back into its starting position, next position yourself in front of the wrapper and beneath the ram, pull the silver lever extending the folding push off. Once the ram has been extended and secured, drive the ram backwards, pushing the end cap fully through the hoop. As the end cap is almost pushed through, press the film snap button located at the side of the door guard. Once the film has been cut, continue to drive the ram to the end of the stroke cycle, allowing the ram to return to its starting position, you can now begin to extend the dispatch by pushing the lever down until the dispatch arm is secure for the final push off. Once the arm is secured, you can now begin to push the wrapper out from underneath the wrap line. After your line has cleared the back rollers, retract the arm into the starting position and begin to fold the dispatch arm upwards. 
After the arm is secured, position yourself in front of the hydraulics and tilt the wrapper back into a leveled position. Once your wrapper reaches a level position, simply raise the rollers back up, re-engage the transport lock, and re-extend your towing tongue outward and begin to tow away. Hopefully this video gives you a better understanding on the operating principles and features of the TLR 5000 Bail Wrapper. For additional information on this product or others from TubeLine, visit us at www.tubeline.ca or call us toll free at 1-888-856-6613.